to the API training video series. This video is about the use of Flight Radar 24. We're going to cover a couple of use cases. One is how to use Flight Radar 24 to find what aircraft may have been visible to a witness and in moving in what direction and at what altitude. Or you can use it to track a flight and thereby determine what might have been visible from that aircraft at a given time. So let's go. To get there, there's a couple ways. You can just type in flightradar24.com and it'll come right up. Or you can go to our resources tab on our homepage, click resources, and scroll down just a little bit to aviation and click on flight radar. Now, when you first bring up flight radar 24, it'll look something like this. The location that you have displaying will vary. Uh, this one shows the Baltimore, Washington area. And you can see a number of planes are shown in the air right now. And also on the ground, I have planes on the ground selected in the settings. There's something important I want you to note right away, though, is that over here at Joint Base Andrews, which is a busy Air Force base, no planes are shown, neither in the air nor on the ground. And this is because military flights in general cannot be tracked by Flight Radar 24. And also there's a number of older aircraft that may not have the correct transponder to be tracked by Flight Radar 24 everywhere. So just keep that in mind. Not every aircraft that's in the air will be displayed on Flight Radar 24. That's an important consideration. So let's zoom back out by clicking the, you can either click the minus button to zoom out, or you can just scroll, use the scroll wheel on your mouse if you prefer to do that. You can go in and out, and this little hand icon lets you move around the map as much as you want. You can also use the search to find a particular place on the map. It could be anywhere in the world, really. Now, I wanted to show you one other important feature for your investigations you're going to use quite a bit if you use Flight Radar 24, which is the star icon over here. That's bookmarks. And once you've logged in, you can use bookmarks to recreate the map that you were on for that investigation so you can get back to it quickly. That's very important if you're trying to save time. So notice I'm not logged in up here. Now, if you're not logged in, there are limitations. And if, if you log in and you have a paid account, you can get more features. And so uh, it, I will mention there was one very important feature in just a moment that you may need a paid account for. And if you don't want to buy a paid account, that's fine. Other people in API have paid accounts and we can run the analysis for you. So let's just do a, a case that we have. First, I'm going to log in. I'm going to show you the limitation that you would have without a gold account, even though I'm logged in with one at the moment. So you go over to this clock icon, the playback, and you click on it. Now, presently it's March 5th, 2020. I would like to go back four days. Let's say I'll go back to March 1st, 2020 at 8 p.m. Now, I'm out here in the mountain time zone, which is about two hours behind Eastern time. Well, exactly two hours behind Eastern time. And I want to set it for March 1st at 2000. However, you notice this time says UTC. That's Coordinated Universal Time, also known as Greenwich Mean Time, sometimes called Zulu or Z. Now, uh, I won't go into the details of that, but every time zone has a certain offset with respect to UTC. In this case, this was the summer. So it was mountain daylight time, so it would have been six hours behind UTC. And how do I know that? Well, 
You can look it up on timeanddate.com or you can just happen to know it. Instead of being at 8 p.m. on March 1st, I'm really going to be at 2 on March 2nd. So I'm going to set this to March 2nd, which I could do without a paid account. And I'm going to set this to, to AM 0200. And then I'm, I'm going to keep the playback speed at 12x and I just hit start playback. So now it's taking me back to 8 p.m., which is 2 a.m. UTC on Monday, March 1st, which is actually Monday, March 2nd UTC. And I can study the planes coming into and out of the area. Now, if I think a plane might be of interest, well, this one's coming close to where my witnesses were, but not exactly. Oh, here's another one that's better. Let's take that one. I'm going to hit pause. And I'm going to click on the plane. Now you'll notice on the left here, I get this nice panel that shows me all kinds of information about the aircraft and where it is, how high above the ground it is, its altitude, and its direction, its speed, and so on. I even get a little picture of it. So this is an Alaska Airlines flight, and it's coming in to land at Salt Lake City. It shows you the scheduled and estimated arrival times. And it shows you the altitude in feet. You can change that to meters if you oh, just hover over it and it gives you two in meters. And it gives you the vertical speed. It's going up a little bit. And ground speed, 259 knots. If you hover over that, it tells you how many kilometers per hour or miles per hour it is. It's 298 miles per hour. And You can see a lot more information, and you can. And I'll show you how to use these buttons down here when we get to the second use case. So I can tell a lot about this plane. It's at 9,000 feet, and it's moving this way. And if we just let it play out, you'll see it probably is going to turn. Oh, now this is a little bit of a bug. Things will reverse a bit before. There, there they go. There it goes into Salt Lake City. So it turned before it got to where my witnesses were. Uh, so it, it's not a very good, uh, good candidate for what they saw. And this goes on. You can pick one plane after the other and determine, is that possibly what our witnesses saw based on its altitude? Based upon, and if it's below 10,000 feet, it may well have its landing lights on, which are very bright, easy to see from a long way off. Um, if it's above 10,000 feet, it may not have its landing lights on, uh, depending on the time of day. So this is just an example of how to use that. Now, I will show you another example that Marsha Barnhart did recently on a case in North Carolina where she showed there was a helicopter in the area for a witness photograph that looked quite a bit like a helicopter. We can track the long flight path of an aircraft, or we can actually see how the ground would look from that aircraft. So let's just pick a flight here. This one, United Airlines 645. It's left Newark and is going to Atlanta. It's currently at 34,000 feet. 
Now you see down here in the lower left, we have all these little icons we can do. Let's look at 3D view first. I'll just show you that briefly. 3D view is quite a cool feature. Let's you see what the ground looks like from the point of view of the aircraft. Now, this looks like a daytime view. It's actually night at present, but you want to be able to see features on the ground, including airports. And you can also see some aircraft that are nearby. And just by navigating with your mouse, you notice you have the, the map over here. You can sort of turn and see what's over to port or starboard. So if you have a witness who was sitting on the right-hand side of the airplane, the starboard side, and saw something out that window, you can look, you can turn this way and see what he might have seen. And you can look just by dragging your mouse around. You can see where the horizon is. And you can click on these little indicators here. They'll tell you what the airport is that that's looking at, the Martinsburg Airport here, or the Winchester Regional Airport, just to give you an example. And this is a reasonable representation of what that aircraft looks like as well. OK, let's turn off 3D view and go to Route. Route backs up and shows you the entire route from the departure in New Jersey all the way down to Atlanta. This is the whole route. Now, you can, if you click on Follow, it'll put you right over where the aircraft currently is. And if you're doing a playback, it's just wherever it is you are on the playback. Now, the other feature, the last feature I want to show you is in this More menu, if you click More, you see you get a nice set of information, even who the photographer is, uh, destination origin airport. But the thing that's probably going to be most interesting here is going to be flight number. If you click on flight number, you get a table of both future and past flights. And you can actually use this to get detailed track information that you can export from Flight Radar 24. Now, what I usually use is this KML. If you're familiar with Google Earth, you know what that is. That is a file that Google Earth can read and actually will place the flight path on Google Earth. So I click on KML and I'll save that file and actually can open Google Earth right away or you can save it for later. It's also a CSV file, which is a kind of like a spreadsheet showing the locations and altitudes. And there's a live view. Um, now, what I recommend is, is that you get some experience using the, the KML, putting it into Google Earth, and then as we'll explore in a future video, you can learn a lot from looking where your witness was in Google Earth and what he might have seen and whether that could have been one of the aircraft that was passing by. So it's a really useful feature. It's also a very useful feature if your witness is on board the aircraft at the time. So there's a lot you can do here if you know the flight number and the date and the approximate time of a sighting. Okay, so let's sum up. We explored two categories of use for the Flight Radar 24 web application. The first of these use cases was to see what aircraft would be visible from a particular perspective on the ground, keeping in mind that this is not all aircraft but is the overwhelming majority of civil aviation flights. We noted that we can replay data up to one year in the past with a gold membership, but only one week with a free membership, and that a lot of information about specific flights is available, including altitude, speed, and the type of aircraft. The second use case was to look from an aircraft's point of view using the 3D view option, and we can also 
show the entire flight path. This is useful when a sighting is reported from an aircraft. We also briefly showed how you can export the flight path to a file that can be imported into Google Earth. We didn't explore every feature in the application, so we encourage you to just bring up Flight Radar 24 and play with it a bit. See what planes are about to fly over and go out and observe them, both night and day. You can also use the free smartphone app to identify planes as they fly over. If you are near a military aviation base, you will likely observe planes that aren't shown. If you thought this video was helpful, please hit the like button below and subscribe so that you won't miss future videos from Aerial Phenomena Investigation and API case files. We have many more videos of this type planned, as well as video case summaries, deep dives, experiments, and more. If you have any questions or comments about this video, please comment below or use the contact form on our website at reportaufo.org. Link below. This video is Creative Commons, so feel free to use it in your own material with attribution.